In this video, we're looking at the topic percentage yield. So we're going to start off with a regular reactant amount calculation. So we've got propane reacting with HCl producing 2-chloropropane. So if we've got 50 grams of propane, how much should we expect to get of product? So if you want to pause the video, work that out, and then let's see if you got that right. So obviously the first thing we do is we calculate how many moles of propane we've got. So we've got 50 grams. The MR of propane is 42 grams per mole. So that comes out at 1.19 moles. If you look at the mole ratio in the equation, it's a one to one ratio. So we should also make 1.19 moles of product and obviously to convert that to grams we multiply the moles by the MR of 2 chloropropane which is 78.5 grams per mole and we get 93.4 grams of product so hopefully you got that right now this 93.4 grams is what we refer to as the theoretical yield so that's assuming 100% conversion. Now, in reality, chemical processes never actually reach the theoretical yield. So possible reasons for that could be that the reaction wasn't given enough time to complete. If the process involves transferring between containers or filtration processes, then obviously you could lose some product in those transfer processes. So there's lots of reasons why we don't get 100% yield or the theoretical yield. So what we're going to do is suppose that only 54 grams of product were made. So this is what we refer to as the actual yield. So we've got two yields on the go. We've got the theoretical yield. That's how much we should get, assuming there was 100% conversion. And we've got the actual yield, which is what we actually get. So the way to turn that into a percentage yield, so the percentage yield equals the actual over the theoretical multiplied by 100. And you can see there that that gives us an answer of 57.8%. So we'll do one more. I'll just pause the question and then if you want to pause the video, have a go and see if you get it right. So we've got this reaction here, the reaction between bromomethane and sodium hydroxide producing methanol and sodium bromide. So let's suppose we started out with 28.6 grams of bromomethane and 5.2 grams of methanol were produced. Typical question would be calculate the percentage yield for this reaction. So remember the first step was to calculate the moles of the substance that we start out with. So we divide the mass by the MR and so the moles of bromomethane that we started with was 0 0.30. So obviously because of the 1 to 1 mole ratio in this equation that means we should make 0 0.30 moles of methanol. So because we've been told how many grams of methanol we've produced we can work out the actual moles that we've made. So we've made 5.2 grams of a substance with an MR of 32 grams per mole. So we've actually made 0.163 moles of product. Remember, we should have made 0.30. So I've taken the actual moles, I've divided by the theoretical moles, and multiplied by 100, and that gives us a percentage yield of 54.2%. For the next part of the video, I'm going to look at a concept called the limiting reagent. So I've written up a classic neutralization reaction on the board there. So it's the reaction between HCl, hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. And I've also written down 
how many moles of each chemical were used or were, were used at the start of the reaction. So you can see there we've got 0.05 moles of acid and 0.03 moles of alkali. So one of these will be what we call the limiting reagent. Basically the limiting reagent is the one that runs out first. So hopefully you can see that it's obviously going to be this one here. So once all of these moles have reacted, then the remaining 0.02 moles of this, they won't have anything to react with. And so um, they will just sit and be unreacted. So this is the limiting reagent because they are, it has the fewest moles. This is the excess chemical. And the limiting reagent will basically limit how much product is produced. So the maximum amount of sodium chloride that's produced has got to be 0 0.03 because these are reacting in a 1 to 1 ratio. So we'll use this esterification reaction to be our first worked example. So we've got ethanoic acid, 3 grams of that, reacting with 2.8 grams of methanol, and that's made 3.2 grams of this ester, so that is methyl ethanoate. And we have been asked to calculate the percentage yield for the reaction. So the first thing we need to establish is which of these reactants is the limiting reagent. Now the examiner sometimes is a bit nasty and you're given these masses here. So they're hoping that some students will automatically go, right, that's 2.8, that's smaller than that, that's my limiting reagent. Well, that may not be the case. So remember, chemists work in moles, not in, in grams. So then the first thing we need to do is work out how many moles we've got of each of these reactants. So I've calculated the moles and you can see that in actual fact, it's the carboxylic acid that is the fewest in moles. So this is our limiting reagent. So what that means is the maximum possible number of moles of ester produced is based on this number here. And because it's a one to one ratio, that means that only 0.05 moles are possible. Now, we've got two choices at this point. We've just worked out that the maximum possible moles of product is 0.05. So we can go down the mass route. So I'll show you that first. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out the maximum theoretical mass. Remember, this is assuming a 100% conversion, 100% yield. So we've just worked out that's the maximum moles possible. The MR of the ester is 74 grams per mole, so that means the theoretical yield, the maximum possible yield, is 3.7 grams. We know that we've actually made 3.2 grams, so the percentage yield is actual 3.2 over possible 3.7 times 100. And if we take it down the moles route, we know that the maximum, maximum possible moles is 0.05. So that's your theoretical moles. And we know that the actual mass produced was 3.2. So what we're going to do is convert that to moles by dividing the 3.2 by the MR of the ester, which comes out at 0.0432. And then we're going to express the percentage yields, but we're going to use the moles instead. So the actual moles was 0.0432 divided by the maximum possible or the theoretical moles was 0.05 and times 100. I've had to write the answer here, but you can see it is exactly the same as the mass method. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, whatever you're more comfortable with but there are two possible ways to do it. So we'll finish with this slightly more obscure 
type of question. Um, I've taken this from one of the 2010 papers. So this is an actual past paper question. So we're told the, that calcium carbide reacts with two moles of water to form one mole of calcium hydroxide and C2H2, which is called ethine gas. Now you're told all these names of these unusual chemicals in the question, so don't be panicking too much about that. And you're even given that equation. So you can see that we're told that 1 times 10 to the 6 grams of calcium carbide have been used and we are also told that 3.60 times 10 to the 5 decimeters cubed of gas is produced and the question asks calculate the percentage yield so the first thing I've done is I've worked out how many moles of calcium carbide we've got so mass divided by MR and that comes out at um, 15,600.62402 is the actual calculator value. So this many moles, now this is a 1 to 1 mole ratio. So that means that we will produce the same number of moles of this gas here. So 15600.6 moles possible. And that's obviously our theoretical moles. And again, we've got a choice of um, method now. So the first method I'm going to show you is by using the moles. So we've just calculated the theoretical moles. We now need to work out, well, what are the actual moles of gas produced? So we're given this volume here. So moles of gas. So remember, it's volume over, we're in decimeters cubed, so it will be over 24. And that comes out at a nice round number of 15,000 moles. And to get it to a percentage yield, we divide the actual moles that we've made by the theoretical moles that were possible, times 100, and that comes out at 96.2%. So if we just remember that number, we'll do it by another method now and see if we get the same answer. We should. So in the other method, we're going to use the volumes. So the first thing we need to do is we need to work out the maximum theoretical volume that would be possible from the maximum theoretical moles of 15600.6. So to work that out, it's the moles times 24 gives us the volume in decimeters cubed so this is the maximum amount of gas we could produce from these moles remember we already know the actual volume that was produced so the percentage yield would be the actual 3.6 times 10 to the 5 over the theoretical 3.74 times 10 to the 5 times 100 and of course we get the same number as before 96.2 percent